Hello. Hello. You look lovely, Mum. Do I? Yes, you do. And you look lovely too, Nigel. Oh, thank you. (laughs) Hello, Nigel. Hi, Pamela. You you do look lovely. We all look lovely. (laughs) You look lovely too. Thank you. No bow tie, Nigel. Uh, Well, it's not a Saturday or Sunday, is it? I think you were. We'll be a bow tie Easter weekend, no doubt. Okay. Okay. And are we going to celebrate Easter? It's a big day. This is. Uh, Well. We shouldn't really, but I, th- I think we're allowed outside stuff. So I think I think we can have a little bit of um, eating in the garden here. Will you do, normally people will go look for Easter eggs in their garden. Will the people coming over to your place be looking for animal bodies? They could be looking for bodies, yeah. Yeah, yeah looking they, they could be looking for bones. Shale's you know? bones, yeah. Something like Especially that. if Fiona brings a new Labrador, they could, she, it could be digging for bones. Yeah, that's great. That's better than eggs. That's way better. <laughs> Uh, that'll be fun. How are you, Mum? Are you going to do anything for Easter? No, no, no. Are you religious, Pam? No, not no. not in not in terms of. Are you spiritual? I believe in something. Yes, yes. I used to be. You used but to be. I, mm-hmm. I think I've really questioned it. Of you know, because last... at one point you 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 made a promise to God that you would stay married forever to a man. My father, I did. and then I did. he broke that. So you've already broken a deal with God. So why would you believe uh, well, it? Well, I mean, if there ain't, there ain't a God, there's no deal to be broken, is there? That's right. Very true. What about you, Nigel? Religious, pious in any way? No, not at all. No. I, I mean, I, I just don't, I can't believe it. The, the, the absolutely huge universe we have, it's expanding. How could anyone be in charge of all of that? I mean, I do respect, I do believe there was some good chappy called Jesus. And you yeah. laid down a code for living that I would believe in and do believe in. And then the Republicans have taken his mantra and they've just put it into a political system seamlessly. Well, it's not just that. To give, to help. The government in general, just full of people who just respect the Lord's wishes to help the yeah, brother we, and we, sister. Wait a minute. Who, wait a minute. And this, and this is not in any way prejudicial or racist, but of the Bible... If we are Christians, the only part that relates to Christianity is the New Testament. What goes before it, the Old Testament, is largely Jewish. Some of it's a bit folklore and some of it's Jewish history, religious history. And I'm not decrying that, but it's got nothing to do with Christianity. Well, I didn't expect this the, to turn the name, into well, a the name is, pro-Jew the name. Christian bashing session. Jesus Christ. What's no, no, your Jesus mouth? Christ. Jesus Christ to you, sir. Jesus Christ, you you, sir. When you were at school, you didn't have any religious education, did you? It's not allowed. Why don't Why don't you? Do you remember when you found a drawing I'd made of myself when I was a child? Do you know where I'm headed? No. You found a picture that I'd drawn. Well, I kept saying to you that I wanted to get a cross. I wanted to get a crucifix necklace. Oh, that was probably like six or seven. And I was like, get me a crucifix necklace. And you were like, oh, my Lord, my son, who's had no real religious input from his parents, is by himself just becoming potentially a man of the cloth. And you were a little touched, right? Yes. And then you saw the drawing I'd made. And the drawing was me in a leather jacket and sunglasses with no shirt on underneath, swimming in a pool with jeans on. And I had a cross on my neck. So the whole thing was it was really more of an aesthetic look. To my summer outfit that I wanted. <laughs> I don't even think I associate. I was like, they put a man on a cross. I don't want to wear that. Well, then I don't know whether you, you've uh, mentioned this before, but then you wanted to go to church, and in those days, I did go to church every once in a while. And you said because one of Nick's friends' father, he was a religious man, and he turned up and he had an enormous cross that I think he was like a preacher or something in a church. And you saw that, and you said you would like to go to church because you'd like to go to the shops there to, to buy a cross. Yeah, it's the same thing. That's the same story. That's exactly what I'm is talking it? about. Yes, that's what it, I wanted the yeah. cross for was my cool summer outfit. Yes, um, yes, yes. And how's the weather been there? I understand the weather is fantastic right now. I can see with your backdrop, well, Mother. It was until yesterday, wasn't it? 
Oh, now it's bad. 21 yeah. degrees yesterday. It was seven degrees when I walked. Uh, walked For the uh, American uh, viewers, 21 degrees is a high. Well, that is 70 to 50. It was oh. 70 degrees yesterday, Fahrenheit, and about 50 today. Oh, okay. 20 degree mm -hmm. drop. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. that's it, it felt cold, I thought. I, I still think it, it feels was... cold. Yes. Well, that's because you've never put the heat on in your home. So that's also. Awesome. Well, I'm, 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 I'm doing my best. Yes. Save, save the pennies. <laughs> save the pennies. The whole thing you're trying to do, Mum, is you're trying to penny pinch every way that you can in order to, when you pass away, leave Nick and I with as much stuff as possible. And we keep telling you to abandon this plan. But in your head, you're going to leave us a sort of Indiana Jones, Last Crusade, cave full of money and jewels. And this is, so you're living your life. You'll get a hundred times each and I'll just think it's heaven. Right. Which yeah, you don't but... believe in. Go ahead, Nigel. Yeah, but also we, I would think that you, your mum and Pam's probably thinking it'd be nice to leave something to their grandchildren as well. Uh, over my I dead body. I don't know. I'm only thinking that. Over maybe. my dead body. No, no. I'm not going to do any of this generational bullshit. I've hung around long enough. Ah! I get the, I'll decide if I want to give them some. Maybe okay. I will. Okay. Maybe yeah, I will. Okay. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, you may um, well do. So uh, today we thought we'd talked a little bit and Nigel, there's a letter that <laughs> you've written that we thought we could uh, share with each other. Now, yeah, yeah. why don't you set up, set up how this came well, to be? I, I got this letter here. Okay. And it, there's another half page there. Okay. From the post office, right? Yeah. Okay. And it was yeah. dated in uh, in July of 2016. Uh, I think it was something like the 15th of July. Okay. And obviously, it, this was rather angersome. It angered me somewhat. So I took some time before I responded. But well, you're better not responding in anger. Nigel, no, you frothing jock. Did you become frothing jock? Well, no, I wasn't frothing at the mouth then, but my, I, it was going through my head what I'd like to do to some of these people. <laughs> anyway, this guy is a manager down at the local depot. Royal Mail delivery, advice to dogs. And they were bloody saying the dog's snapping behind letterboxes. How does your dog behave around Royal Mail? And then so, if, you, so they, if you contact me, if you contact me, we'll come to a decision and we'll, we'll, we'll re resolve this. You know? so was, this, was this sent to everybody? No, we sent because little, you remember little Mishy is eight yeah. inches at the shoulder. Yeah, you're uh, small dog. Apparently, the, the letterbox was quite low down, and behind the door, it would go whoop, 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 and snap. Okay, uh, so the, know, the, the, post, any, the postman's trying to put the mail through your mail slot, and Mishy is just barking and potentially nipping at the mailman. Yeah, and well, it is. The it mailman is. goes to headquarters, and he goes, hey, you know, there's this dog that just <laughs> trying to bite my yeah. hand. They and send I, you I a letter. Right a, they yeah, send you a letter that. basically saying, what is the if letter? We don't is? resolve it. They would suspend deliveries. This sort okay, of so you're not going to get mail unless your dog stops doing that. Well, yes, that was what they were saying. So my my response to them, and I just wrote back to them and I said, your letter of whatever it is, 50 July refers, what a waste of paper and time. Did you make any attempt to ascertain the facts? Are you aware that there has been for several years now a post box on the outside wall, approximately five feet from the front door? Oh, so you have another... Feet, you have another receptacle for yeah, your Yeah, I put it on the, yes, to, to make it easier because this was bending away okay, down. And it was right. not a very easy place. Okay, okay. Keep so going. Uh, effectively then, I said, in my view, the post box at about average head height is a boon to delivery people as it saves them from having to bend, which could cause or exacerbate back problems. You really need to give advice to your delivery people. The dog in question is a pint-sized Jack Russell, barely eight inches at the shoulder. It is never outside the door off the lead. And as a and as a police approved part of our security system, wait, it does you, of course girl and bark if someone comes and approaches the house. Wait, it is wait. right because the previous time when we had when we had, uh, uh, when we had uh, what you call the dog before it, whatever uh, it's in the yard, who cares? I, I know. If anybody came, to, the police came to the door and said, "Well, your little window's open at the front," because as he approached the door. It's, uh, <laughs> The dog zoomed up the door. Woof, 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 woof. That was a Labrador. Oh, he said, oh, I realize you've got that. So he, they approved that method of okay. uh, of me. So, and then I said, as a lad, I spent seven years delivering newspapers every day of the week, including Sundays. I never had any trouble with dogs because I believe I was blessed with common sense, a quality apparently lacking today. Uh, 
<laughs> the first piece of advice for your people, surely, is to use observation skills to detect any outside postmarks. So, Secondly, I very... assume a dog behind a solid door isn't going to hurt them. <laughs> I don't really uh, understand what, if you're a postman or a post person, I mean, you don't need to put your hand through the You spot. push that thing through like that. Yeah, you put, you put like the big newspaper part ahead and you kind of thrust it you through. You push it through. And your hand doesn't go anywhere near the other hand, side. I mean, if your hand's going in there, you're crazy. You're an idiot. You're an idiot, uh, yes. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> I said, I never had any trouble with dogs. Yeah, as I say, secondly, I assure them that a dog, and then the third bit after I shouldn't have a dog behind the solid door because it wasn't going to hurt them. Management should also arrange, where appropriate, appropriate, for psychological help for employees who are afraid of dogs. Perhaps management could also return to a regular postman or woman policy that would enable the delivery person to build local knowledge of his or her fun. My final thing, Wait, I trust you. Wait, what is, wait, what is that last line say? Say that last line again. I said, perhaps management could also return to a regular postman or woman policy of where you were getting the same postman every day. Oh, you kept okay. Changing them. Okay, gotcha. Because then they built up local knowledge. And then I said right. in bulk caps, I trust you now have sufficient information to withdraw your threat. Final paragraph. If not, please have the courage and decency to address any outstanding issues face to face. Uh, My telephone number is given above. I've never heard another word. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't remember writing this? Well, I found it somewhere. And I, I, it was only when I, when I got back, I thought, bloody hell, that's good. <laughs> I was clapping myself in the back. That was quite good. <laughs> I can't imagine them reading that. They were probably like, all right, look, just, just get his mail. It doesn't matter. Just give him his fucking mail. I don't care. I don't care. Ugh. <laughs> Well, but anyway, I, I just I had a big laugh when I saw it again. I, I had forgotten all about it. Well, we'd we'd sort of reference this uh, when we just have our big family FaceTimes on the weekend. We'd sort of reference this situation a couple of times. And it, it got me to thinking, how are you, mom? It's been Nigel and I talking for a while. Are you all right there? Oh, no, it's fine. I'm just going to have a sip of water. Thank you. Cheers. That's everybody. not OK. No, no, no uh, water. No water okay. for the guests. Just for the host. OK. Uh -huh. <laughs> but uh it reminded me of a, I have a friend who it was kind of in a similar situation where he was offended by the practices of a business. He took keyboard in hand and uh, wrote a letter, uh, which he also doesn't remember writing. So there must be something that happens when you just get furious at these bureaucracies and you just, <laughs> you black out essentially. You're just the vehicle for which the frustration and anger flows through. Um, no, but this must ahead. be happening more often, Gareth, because oh, yeah. what we're getting here is ludicrous things, you know, things that were simple years ago are now made much more complicated. Well, that's the whole thing. I mean, the whole thing in this country and there and any, I mean, the era of great attentive customer is always right service has ended. They've realized they can't afford to do that anymore because every, you know, if you're not expanding, you're shrinking and that's not okay in the capitalist society. So they now, you know, they, they trim the things, they trim the benefits. Like in this country, everything costs a dollar more, but you get a little bit less. And that's just how it keeps going every four years. It just keeps going. But anyway, so, so my friend had had uh, a situation where he went to uh, a Subway, a Subway sandwich restaurant I ended up calling it a restaurant. It's not good. I actually walked into a Subway restaurant one time in my neighborhood, and these girls had two bunnies on their tables while they were eating. And I was just like, is this, how is this? This can't be okay. Like, this can't be an acceptable health code to have hair on your table. Anyway, he was pissed. So he wrote a letter that he doesn't remember, and I asked him to dig up this letter, and he finally found it. So I thought I could read this letter to you. So this, to me, would be like your American brethren or your American counterpart. Um, this was written in 2010. So this was, this was before. This is from my buddy uh, Burns, who has really balanced out. But for a while, we'll show a picture of him. I'll get a picture. But for a while, you know, he would be quick to anger. I think he was not fully happy. He was living in Los Angeles. You know, we're not happy there. Um, okay, so here it goes. To whom it may concern. This letter is in regards to the Subway restaurant located at 6660 Sunset Boulevard, Unit L, Sunset Boulevard, California, 90028. 
The phone number is 323-465-4342. The details within refer to a trip I made there today, May 10th, 2010, approximately 12.45 p.m. So already you can tell he's, he's, I mean, he's making it like a police report. He's just, he's kitchen sinking it. He's just tossing everything their way, hoping that this sounds professional. By the way, the, it, it does sound professional. This is a guy, you know, walking around barefoot all the time and this, you know, smoking pot constantly, like just not the, not, not the businessman he's claiming to be at this time. He since has done very well. Anyway, in short, the combative and rude service at this subway chain has just cost subway restaurants $2,500 annually. My name is Alexander L. Burns. I'm a professional who works out of my home, <laughs> which is located just around the corner from my house. It is no stretch of the imagination to say that I frequent this particular subway at least five times a week. Seriously. Sometimes I go twice a day. Do I love subway that much? No. But it is, all caps, super, super convenient, lowercase, and I believe it to be healthier than the Carl's Jr., which is also around the corner. That's like McDonald's, basically. Suffice it to say, uh, I go there all the time. I get a foot-long sandwich. I mean, this is just crazy. I get a foot-long sandwich, a large iced tea, and a bag of chips every time. The price comes to $10. He doesn't remember writing this. The price comes to $10 a trip. Five trips a week, $10 a trip equals $50 a week. Say I do this uh, for 50 weeks out of the year, which I do, that comes to $2,500 a year from me and me alone. And to be honest, I really think that the estimation is conservative. Frankly, I go there more than five times a week. And I'll likely go there all 52 weeks out of the year just because I really don't like to make meals for myself. I mean, it's just, it's like, why would you, you know what I mean? If you're reading this in Subway, you're like- I'm digressing. Yeah, you're like, why? I'm not going to listen to a guy who's just telling me he can't leave his house or make food. Like this man is, yeah, this is an invalid. Um, uh, Because I don't like to make meals for myself. Thank God there's a Quiznos across the street, which is another like Subway type space. Thank God there's a Quiznos across the street. I didn't used to go there because, well, it's across the street. Sunset is busy. Why waste all that time waiting for the light to change both ways when I could just go to Subway that's on my side of the street? Again, <laughs> if you are presenting yourself like an adult professional, maybe letting them know that you're scared of crossing the road on your own. <laughs> that might not be the best. That might not be the best thing to let them know. <laughs> I mean, just the lazy. Why don't I cross the street? Because I'm lazy as shit. Anyway. Um, uh, what I could, uh, oh, uh, why not go to the subway that's on my side of the street? Oh, that's right, because they're incredibly rude people working at the subway, whereas the nice girl at Quiznos knows my name even though I've only been there a handful of times. Now, I understand that in this day and age, large companies like Subway don't seem to care too much about the individual customer. I can't blame you. There's a lot going on that you've got to deal with. Very interesting point of connection he's trying to make with the corporate overlords now. But this lack of customer service is a real problem and could really hurt you in the end. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine? I mean, Subway, Subway comes out consistently. And like I saw a sign at Subway the other day and it said, now using real eggs, which is always my favorite thing that companies do when you just go, okay, what was it before? Yeah. And they're just like, not eggs. There was a time where Subway was talking about how they put they had this whole ad campaign about how they're taking chemicals out of their bread. They were like, no longer are we going to use acid bicarbonate 912 or whatever it was. And you'd look it up and it was in yoga mats. It was what they put. It was like, it was like what, it was like a, basically a plastic. And they were like, we're not using that anymore. And you'd like, I've been eating there for 10 years eating yoga mat, you sons of bitches. <laughs> anyway, he's, he's obviously making a real threat here that, you know, this lack of customer service is a real problem and it could really hurt you in the end. I will no longer go to this or any other Subway restaurant after the simply atrocious treatment I received there today. And you see, it's not the first time I've received shoddy treatment there. That's the thing. There has been consistent patterns of resentment and bad attitudes from one of your sandwich technicians in particular. A sandwich technician? Her name is Gabby. Her name is, her name is Gabby. And she now has been rude to me the last three times she made my sandwich. <laughs> Bloody hell! Wow, Lanta! Oh, oh God! <laughs> well, by the way, when I I, I when I go I asked him for a copy of this, he goes, "Yeah, it's fine." You know, 
because he owns it. He, he admits it's totally crazy. But he said to his wife, his now wife, might have been girlfriend at the time, that uh, at one point, one of my friends was reading this to a room full of people. And he was just sitting there thinking his girlfriend was going to leave him. <laughs> <laughs> now what? Uh, okay. This guy. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, just like, I thought I knew you. Clearly, you're a yeah. lunatic. I mean, you're a psychopath. Uh, okay. Um, her name is Gabby, and she now has been rude to me the last three times she made my sandwich. And I mean incredibly rude. Just oozing contempt. Today, I asked for the Chipotle mail. Chipotle mail, not Chipotle mail. That's what you had an issue with. The Chipotle mail. <laughs> Instead, she gave me the regular mail. Never mind the fact that I only said the word Chipotle. This is not my problem. Accidents happen all the time, and I understand that. When I told her I wanted Chipotle mail, she snapped at me. You said light mail. She then squeezed the Chipotle mail all over the light mail, to which I said but I don't want the light mayo. <laughs> I just, I mean, imagine I, reading. I, ma I guarantee you if you work, you're gathering CEOs or, hey, come on, we're gonna read it again if you work at Subway yeah. headquarters. Come on, we're gonna read it this time. Okay. Uh, uh, you said light mayo. She then squeezed the chipotle mayo over the light mayo, which I said, I don't want the light mayo. She then ripped all the meat. There's some caps going on here for the action verbs. She then ripped all the meat off of the sandwich and scraped the mayo off while staring at me as if, I, looking at me as if I were lower than dirt. This isn't the first time she has looked at me like that. It was at this point that I became upset. I said, quote, you know, I understand that mistakes happen, but you give me attitude every time I come in here. Why are you always so rude to me? Now, now this is when another employee singled me out. Yeah, but now this, is when, this is when another employee singled me out in front of the store and said, hey, calm down, buddy. You you singled yourself out. Nobody need, I guarantee, if I was behind line with this person in front of me, I'd be like, this guy's out of his fucking mind. I mean, I'd be like, it's having some guy go, hey, calm down, buddy, buddy, wouldn't make me go, oh, is something happening? I would already be, I'd be filming him. I'd be standing behind him in line filming everything that he did. Hey, calm down, buddy. I thought he said, I thought he said Whitey, but I'll give him the benefit of the doubt in this situation because I believe it to be unlikely he would say something racist. I mean, you know that you are standing on thin ice when you are claiming white racism in a subway. I was treated like a white person. Um, but he did continue to berate me, to scold me, to talk down to me as if I'd been the one in the wrong. I'd tell you this guy's name, but he wasn't even wearing a name tag. He was wearing a black shirt, however, and certainly should have recognized that, the, and certainly should have recognized me as one of the store's best customers. It was then I realized that they didn't care. These guys just did not care that I had been such a good customer. Right then, I decided I would never buy another Subway sandwich as long as I live. 100% bullshit, by the way. I bet you he was there like a week later. Um, <laughs> Right then, I never Subway sandwich as long as I've. And I'm a big Ryan Howard fan, so that's upset me. So in 2010, this baseball player, Ryan Howard, had a big deal with Subway, and he was Burns' favorite player. So, 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 so again, I mean, again, he's created. And by the way, there's no period at the end of this sentence here. I'm a big Ryan Howard fan, so that upsets me. So, I mean, it is like a child being like, and by the way, my favorite athlete eats there, so this is really hard. <laughs> I'm not the type of guy who writes angry letters to companies. Well... Good. In fact, I've never done it before. Doesn't show. This feels rehearsed. But, but what happened today was so upsetting. I had to say my piece. I get the feeling that this email doesn't impress. I get the feeling that this email doesn't impress upon you just how rude the service was. Rereading my tale now, it sounds trite and petty. But I assure you the behavior exhibited is not what you want from your employees. I do believe there to be any, I do not believe there to be any reason or avenue for legal recourse in this matter, but be that as it may, I will be forwarding this letter along to my lawyer as well in the interest of covering my basis. I mean, the idea that he has a lawyer to give this to, I mean, he, I mean, he may as well put it in a bottle and throw it in the sea. Oh God. Okay. Uh, for Lee, but, uh, uh, along to my lawyer as well, in the interest of covering my bases. I only thought it was fair for you to know this. So he's giving the, the Subway, arguably two, number two, three largest food supplier in this country as far as prepared meals goes. Uh, be prepared for Burns's 
lawyer to maybe reach out to you when you'll mm -hmm. have your legal team. Uh, I would love to hear a response from you. An attempt to set this right would be most appreciated. Not that I expect either. Extremely disappointed, Alexander Burns. Uh, funny. Did they write back to him? No, nobody wrote back to him. <laughs> Why would, would you write you back to that person? You'd be like, he will yeah. show up here. He'll be crazy. Let him go to the... Now, I, if anything, I'd be like, make him cross the street. Fuck this guy. Mm -hmm. Make him cross the street a bunch. Do you think Gabby got employee of the month award? I guarantee you Gabby continued to work there and yeah. uh, not give a shit. But yeah. imagine the reaction when you say, I want Chipotle mayo, and she's got the one mayo on, and then she goes... <laughs> on the yeah. mayo, you are, and just like, I don't want the original mayo. <laughs> <laughs> so it felt reminiscent to me, Nigel, of your. Uh, well, your I think it was a, a, far, a far funnier a response, to be quite honest. But as you say, it was a real rant that was. That he was, was, he that. was not trying to be funny in any No, way. I'm not thinking yeah. he was trying to be no. funny. But what he did was he, he wrote that right away. That's yes. why I waited three weeks before I wrote mine. Ah, uh, you're a learned man. You respond immediately. I mean, that was the same when you're yeah, working. Yeah, same day. He even says when it you're in working, here. If you get somebody writing something like that. In fact, one of the guys that I started working with in air, somebody wrote in a complaint. And this chap, he, he'd been a fighter pilot in the war. Uh, and, and, and he wrote a poem back. It was a wonderful poem to this guy. He wrote a you know, poem and complaint. All the points and I thought it was one of the most fantastic responses he'd ever seen in my life. That is genius. That's how you write complaint letters. You write complaint poems. Yeah, or, or else, if somebody complains, you write a, a, a conciliatory poem back. Right, right. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Roses are red, violets are blue. We're a big company and don't give a shit about you. <laughs> well, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, we do and Pam's met Burns many times. He seems normal. <laughs> and yes. then in his head, he just has things like this living in there. So. But that was yeah. the equivalent of something we talked about before, Gareth, is he obviously was seeing the red mist that day. He was, he was living inside <laughs> the red mist, Nigel. He couldn't see out. He was just throwing haymakers in the red mist, just trying to make some fleshy contact with his fists. But what, the mistake he made was he should have given a copy and posted it through... The, the, the actual uh, restaurant itself. The mistake he made was writing the letter. Yeah, I mean, but he hadn't done it. He should yeah. have sent a copy and put it through the Yeah, he should have it nailed it to the door and said, this is for or Gabby. Else avoided the dog. You know? I want Gabby to see this. Or just yeah. wait outside. I need to talk to Gabby! Yeah. I think he should have let Gabby know what he was writing about her. It's only fair. Uh, just crazy. But I, I think I think since then that's the behavior that you sort of expect now, don't you? All the time. What do you mean, the, from consumers or from the company? For, for consumers, I just think there is such um, customer service. Both parties, yes. exactly. Yes. People now yes. are, are really much in a, a much shorter lead temper wise yes. than yes. ever they were before. Oh yeah. No, there's no yeah. doubt. Yeah. I, I think I think the um, you know introduction of needing so many items in your world and your life has just, you know, I mean, when you think about how Amazon practices now, like you get things immediately. So people yeah. are so spoiled by the immediacy of you know, yeah. their needs that they, they expect everything to be done immediately. I think you've just got to like, you know, you just have, I mean, I think about this when I would travel a lot, this is, I would always just say to myself, look, you're just going to have these days that are just going to suck. And when they come, you just have to kind of take it on the chin. I mean, of course, you're still pissed off in the day, you know, and I've tweeted at American Airlines. I've had many, you know, heated conversations with them online, but it is, you know, you're just, you have to expect bullshit, but it is true. I think you're right, mom. Like it's more and more it's, there's less, and you're given less and less and, you know, and you are expected to take. And with the pandemic, I mean, the, the, you know, that's just become, the biggest excuse out ever and it's got worse again since that yeah you know customer services use that as an excuse even more that you know it's, for... it's hard to tell exactly what the hell is going on right now just because mm -hmm. everything is in such weird well, flux also i found that in official side if you're talking about government or whatever i mean one incident yeah, pam, pam knows a bit uh, down at the salon, you know, uh, daughter and her business partner. Mm -hmm. And they were talking about they had an inspection with minimum wage people. Uh, okay. And one of the things they came up with, one of the young girls that was in there said, oh, she would like a, a certain shampoo and conditioner. She didn't have the money. She said, can you just take it off my wage at the end of the month or whatever it was? Mm. 
and uh, and when this was recorded, they said, "Oh well, that's you falling below the minimum wage." I said, "What? What do you mean? Well, they're not allowed to do that." I said, "What do you mean?" Uh, she asked them to. Oh no, it doesn't matter. And they they were going for several thousand pounds, and I had to fight for about three months, four months, and I had to look at the act and use the skills that I got being a tax inspector because it's uh, the same. They didn't know who they were messing with. They, they, they got in just, the they got in the ring with a bull. Yeah, we reduced it to about a hundred pounds or some rubbish. You know <laughs> <I'm saying? laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, yeah but, that but, would not happen here. But what annoys me, we had to do that with Ross's electricity as well, and with his water. Well, because they do, they, I think, you have to fight them. they would rather make a profitable mistake than a non-profitable one. So yeah. they would rather go in the direction of overcharging versus... And most people would accept it, wouldn't they, eventually? You, you know? do, because you get so sick of it. You just get so sick just, of the fight. Yeah, they, know but, they, they tire you out. You're on the ropes, essentially. But, but um, you know, have I we got abhor. any pictures? I think we should shift gears. Oh, yeah. We have a couple but minutes. I abhor, abhor unfairness, and that's why you fight to the teeth, to bloody you know, everything you've got to, to resist it. But one I thought was most appropriate today, look at that. Who do you recognize those two? Oh, it's Pam and Nige. You know where that Where's, is, Pam? Where's that's that? That's the day we walked from the eye hospital along the canals into Birmingham. Oh, that's right. Oh, the yes. Isn't that 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 I thought that looked like Paris. I thought it looked like well, the I, same. I said to I said to Hillary that, and she said, no, it's not. And if you oh. see that kind of bull, the big uh, tower in centre yeah. of Birmingham, that's what told me, and I remember... Uh. Oh, that was a brilliant day. We sat outside in the cafe out in the square. It was a wonderful day, wasn't it? It was absolutely lovely, wasn't it? It was a beautiful walk. It was so nice that some people mistook it for Paris. Well, it was a Paris day. It was a lovely day for eating outside in the cafe outside. It was like, it was like a Paris day. Right. It was absolutely lovely. Yeah. Yeah. You may have seen this one, but somebody somebody was having it on. I was falling asleep. Oh, this is the best. Was this that is the you best. Will you, will you pull it a little closer? Push it a little closer. It's the best. So. Is that you that did that? <laughs> yeah, who, who put the cigarette in Nigel's I would, mouth? I would I would guess it was me. If I had to make an educated <laughs> if I had to make an educated guess. Because I'm remember, sure a lot, I'm sure the little egging along oh, I'm from Ross. And the old look, look, you know, which yeah, I had yeah. a few. But then, I mean, but you know how great it feels when someone's like this and you get a cigarette in their mouth and they don't wake up? <laughs> I should have lit it. Well, well I would have been dead as Had you? He would have opened up then, coughing. Have you got, have you got some, Gareth? You got I some? got nothing. I'm all dependent I, on you, but we don't have I, to do I, too I, many. You got I some? Anything, because I thought, uh, I want to spoke. Kill. My good lady sussed a few with me on it. So All right, let's do that. That would be great. Then we'll then we'll close out. Ooh, look at that. Where's that now? Showing the way I, to I, France. That's okay. a ferry to France. Ferry to France. We'll be going to Brittany there. Right. We'd oh. hope to get back there sometime after this. But France is locking down again today. Yeah, Europe. Mm -hmm. Saturday they're locking down for four weeks or something. That's yes. Great. Is that the dog? The yes, I definitely hear the squeaking toy. Yeah. I, hear, I hear that this uh, this this almost uh, is before your time, but I think oh, you that's must. Our yard, though. Yes, yes. That's that's Sasha. Yeah. That's our above ground pool. That uh, look at the ladder. Yes. <laughs> look yeah. at that, nice. Yeah, yeah, baby. Nice and fit there. Yeah, that's right. You must have been in your prom at that time because you probably sitting in a dishwashing been, bucket. That was that was about <laughs> me time of nineteen eighty. <laughs> You okay. would have been five months old, the... maybe six months. So then that's your son there. That's right. He would be one, just over one. Okay. He so I was probably knowing what I'm six months old. Would I be in the sink? Would I be in a dog yeah. dish? Well, she would didn't I be sitting in a bucket? Pool, you, anyway. you would have been in your outdoor bath. Okay. So I would have, I like the term outdoor bath for bucket. Thank you. Yes. For the bucket. Yes. My yes. outdoor bath. Yes. All right, Nigel, let's have one one or two more then. Oh my God, look at this. Yes. Let me see. Yeah. I can't see it. What it's is Nigel. it? Nigel. I can't. Did Nigel say something? Do the and scroll. I did you not do the swipe over thing, oh, though? No, I didn't. I didn't yeah, do, do that. It. Have you not been able to see Nigel the whole time? No. Look, you've got to see this. Where oh, You've vanished. Oh. You've, how the what hell did that happen? No, well, that's it. Pointing forward, going back. Oh, yeah. Well, you've turned it around. Oh, that's Oh, but where am I? <laughs> oh, what are you doing, Pam? I don't know what I've done. I've lost myself. It's a nice 
to you, though, isn't it? Is that a ghost to you? I can't, I can't believe that. Oh, there she is. Oh, okay. that's it. That's it just... Now, can you, you see the picture? No, yes. Oh, okay. God. Look at that. That must, that yeah. must have been Sturby's tax office. I left here in 1985. So... Wait. Hold it up again. What do you think you were yelling about there? I haven't a bloody clue. It was a Christmas party. <laughs> So you think you're a bit pissed just having a, sh a tax shout? No, I don't look pissed. My eyes are fine. You look amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. A little bit amazing. But that <laughs> was me in my palm, <laughs> in my prime, in uh, my prime. Beautiful. You're actually, you're actually sure I can do some laboring work. Oh, yeah. The burying a dog probably, right? No, that was building oh. the extension, I think. Oh, I just, He's grinding I, the dog. He's I, grinding the dog. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Your old dog was mixed in the cement. It was going to have a, what did you call it, with these mafia people? The yeah. Problem in the country. yeah, that's what you that, say. The yeah. mafia says that someone sleeps with the fishes. Nigel goes, they sleep with the kittens. <laughs> Nigel was at Ken Rillington Place. Where, where, Ken um, Rillington Place, yeah. Now, there's something interesting as well. Oh, there's a birthday yeah. king here. Wait, wait, go, go. Uh, we're just lower it. There you go, perfect. Look that's it, that. yeah, yeah. yeah. But obviously, from the cake on the table, it looks like a three-year, three-year-old birthday with a footballer. So I can only presume it's your cousin. Wow, three. that's quite an eye. What an investigative yeah. eye you've got. Well, mm -hmm. well, it looks. To, you tell me, is there three? Is there three, uh, three candles here? Yep, three. That's three. Yes. <laughs> the power of deduction. Yeah. Although yeah. I think it looks more like. Uh, that's hard to tell. Hard do you think it? Would, do you think it would be Hayden? No, because I, I can't remember that T-shirt, Pam. Uh, but, you judge but, it time by T-shirts, exactly. And also, you, the cabinet was down that end, the one we've got further up now. I think that was a long while ago. The cabinet. All right, let's, I, let's do I, one I more, then. One more. <laughs> now, here, here's to show you in France. Don't worry about Hayden. No. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, that's nice. Ten years on and on. What does that shirt mean? Well, well that's one of these... Um, Hash things that I used to get all my t shirts from Angie everywhere they went, they brought you a t shirt back, right? Right, and that's and what, what's behind you. That was that was one of these big chateaus in France, a chateau over the place, a chateau, lovely. Well, that wasn't when we went to France, was that when you went with Angie and Dave? Well, it could have been because once upon a time we went with the two Angies and Dave, didn't we? <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, and, and then Chris and Carol, there were eight of us went. It was a year of the French election. A bunch of people we don't know. Yes, um, we're not talking about them, but yeah, we don't need to worry about these. It was your mum then. Did you, characters. Oh, not that, not me. <laughs> yeah. And there's another one. There's another right, let's one. Do one more. Oh, look yeah. at that. Oh, that's nice. That's a good little. Pimp. Is that? Is that France too? That looks as if it's Brittany. And one of these buildings outside it, this really st this would be appropriate for some of your humor, Gareth, because that's where they, they, I can't even remember the name of it. They stack all the dead bones, all the bones, all the dead people. That's no, that's There's your name, but I can't remember. Thing, but a mausoleum? Yeah, but they start, they just stuffed all the bones that's into the thing. shed. Why is that yeah. my thing? That's what you do in your yard. No, I don't no, do that. You keep, you keep dwelling on it, keep coming I don't, back. I'm not oh, dwelling. It's the insane. Bones, the bones. Well, it's insane. I, of course I'm dwelling on it. You've created a pet cemetery in your home. But you keep coming back to it. But how can I leave it? I mean, the second that I start burying animals in my yard, I'll leave you be. <laughs> well, I, just, I, hope, I hope they have to bury me there before they have to bury this little dog. I, I want to just say, look how lovely Starbridge looks in the background at this oh, time. Oh, beautiful. Just make you want to come and visit everybody. Only mum would stop to talk about how great her well, view is. Yeah, but, but on the way back from my quarter to six appointment, when I, they, they were trying to make me even more female than I am already, getting the female hormones into me. Uh, actually, it was the warmest part of the day, 9.5. Uh, 9.5 it was. That's 85 okay. degrees for Americans. No, no, but it was, no, but it was really points. warm, wasn't it? it? I mean, it was really windy. Yeah, but it, that, that was a wee bit warmer than seven degrees when I went yeah. midday. Yes. Yeah. Well, is, lovely, lovely to have you join us as always, Nigel. Thank you for sharing your uh, well, letter. Well, I, I thought it was you sharing that other letter. That was well, fantastic. Do you, do you feel, does any part of you feel a little less crazed after hearing what my friend did over a Subway well, sandwich I mail? Please, I just thought, how did you word that beautiful letter? I was patting myself on the back. <laughs> and that was a really crazed one.
Yeah, he, was crazy. Make no mistake. Give yourself time to, to gather your thoughts before you commit to writing. Well, I mean, and I will say, if you do not do that, then please save the letter so that your friends can read it later on. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Mum. How are you, Mummy? Anything to plug? Any stand updates you've got coming? Promotions? No, I no. I've, I've got nothing, and I don't think you have a I'm... new podcast, don't you? Do I? Oh yes, oh, I do. What's it called? Remind I me. I don't, it's called the Pamcast. We'll do it eventually. Um, <laughs> and Nigel, thank you as always. A pleasure. A pleasure. Thank pleasure. you, Gareth. Pleasure. 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 Talk to yourself. Oh, Happy wait, Easter. Hold on. hold on, I'll just do this instead. I'll just stop the recording.